Act Three of Treasure Island, a play in four acts by Jules Eckert Goodman. Act Three, Scene One, in front of Ben Gunn's cave. When the curtain rises, the stage is in darkness. The darkness just before dawn. Then gradually the light comes stealing in, turning the black to grey, and until this melts into tones of early dawn the whole reaching a sort of climactic effulgence with the rise of the sun birds and morning fowl are heard in the trees the whistle of insects which always ushers in dawn the call of here and there an animal there is no sign of anything human the whole atmosphere of the scene suggesting a place in its primal beauty then suddenly when the sun has fully risen above the horizon from the side of the hill which was here steep and stony a spout of gravel is dislodged and falls rattling and bounding through the trees the next instant comes half creeping half sliding from his cave ben gunn almost cannibal like he looks about hurriedly and then reassured crawls up to a crevice in the rocks from which there trickles a small stream of water lying full length upon the ground drinks then of a sudden he starts as if he heard something again reassured he again stoops to drink but this time he arises hurriedly and with more decision he goes quickly to the left and peers through the trees apparently seeing no one he goes to the right and searches there then suddenly with a half smothered cry he turns runs up back and hides jim enters almost at once for a moment he looks about wonderingly he seems weary and tired and he is about to go on when suddenly he catches sight of ben gunn hiding all alert now he stops my eyes turned instinctively in that direction and i saw a figure leap with great rapidity behind the trunk of a pine what it was whether a bear or man or monkey i could in no wise tell it seemed dark and shaggy more i knew not but the terror of this new apparition brought me to a stand i was now it seemed cut off upon both sides behind me the murderers before me this lurking nondescript and immediately i began to prefer the dangers i knew to those i knew not silver himself appeared less terrible in contrast with this creature of the woods and i turned upon my heel looking sharply behind me over my shoulder and began to retrace my steps in the direction of the boats instinctively the figure reappeared and making a wide circle began to head me off i was tired i was tired at any rate but had i been as fresh as when i arose i could see it was in vain for me to contend in speed with such an adversary from trunk to trunk the creature flitted like a deer running manlike on two legs but unlike any man i had ever seen stooping almost double as it ran yet a man it was i could no longer be in doubt about that i began to recall what i had heard of cannibals i was within an ace of calling for help but the mere fact that he was a man however wild had somewhat reassured me and my fear of silver began to revive in proportion i stood still therefore and cast about for some method of escape and as i was so thinking the recollection of my pistol flashed into my mind as soon as i remembered i was not defenceless courage glowed again in my heart and i set my face resolutely for this man of the island and walked briskly toward him he was concealed by this time behind another tree trunk but he must have been watching me closely for as soon as i began to move in his direction he reappeared and took a step to meet me then he hesitated drew back came forward again and at last to my wonder and confusion threw himself on his knees and held out his clasped hands in supplication jim who are you ben gunn i am poor ben gunn i am and i haven't spoken with a christian these three years three years ay three blessed years shipwrecked here nay mate marooned marooned you mean put here purposely and left alone to live or die ay mate marooned three years agone and lived on goats since then 
and berries and oysters wherever man is says i man can do for himself but my my heart is more for christian diet confidentially stepped to jim uh, now you mightn't have a piece of cheese about you eh? jim shakes head no well uh, many's the long night i've dreamed of cheese toasted mostly and wake up again and here i were if i get on board again you shall have it by the ton if ever you get on board again says you looking toward sea yes why now who's to hinder you jim noticing gunn's manner and putting on a show of bravery not you i know right you was now you uh, what do you call yourself mate jim 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 suddenly takes hold of jim's clothing as jim draws back half afraid oh there there now don't you be afraid of ben gunn i'm not afraid that's right i've lived that rough you'd be ashamed to hear just look at these indicates his clothing <laughs> rags tatters pieces of old ship's canvas and bits of old sea cloth all held together with brass buttons and bits of stick and loops of tarry gaskin now you look at me you'd never think i had a pious mother would you now why no not particularly uh, well i had remarkable pious and i was a civil pious boy and could rattle off my catechism that fast as you couldn't tell one word from another fact and here's what it came to jim points about the island and it began with chuck feathered in a cemetery on the blessed gravestones that's what it begun with but it went farther than that and so my mother told me and predicted the whole she did the pious woman but how did you get here it were providence that put me here i've thought it all out on this here lonely island and i'm back on piety you don't catch me tasting rum so much but just a thimbleful of her luck of course <laughs> the first chance i get i'm bound i'll be good and takes him by the arm i i see the way to confidentially and looking about and jim i'm rich jim starting and trying to draw away rich you why rich rich i says but and i'll tell you what i'll make a man of you jim you'll bless your stars you will you was the first that found me and <laughs> suddenly with great change and intensity now jim you tell me true tell you what that ain't flint's ship out there it ain't no and flint is dead with evident relief ah but i'll tell you true as you ask me there are some of flint's hands aboard worse luck for the rest of us not a man with one leg silver ay silver he's cook and ringleader too if you was sent by long john i'm as good as pork and i know it I'm not sent by silver. Now tell me true, Jim. You you tell me true. I'm running from him. He and his hands mutinied on us. On who, mate? Squire Trelawney and Captain Smollett and Dr. Livesey. Mutinied, you say, Jim? Yes. We had come on that ship to look for Flint's treasure. Eh? Crosses to cave. We had Flint's map. Flint's best? And where did you get that i got it from bill bones when he died billy bones dead too i gave it to the squire somehow silver got wind of it he managed to deceive the squire by appearing kindly and ay that would be silver's way there was flint 
barring rum his match would never seen he were afraid of none not he on his silver silver was that genteel well last night they made a demand for the map the squire was in a hard way and gave it to them flint's fist no a false map oh, oh not the right one no but i think silver suspected he made me come along with them as soon as the boats grounded i jumped then i ran with all my might through the woods all night i wandered about until i found you and now sir since i've told you won't you help me get back to my friends won't you please so your squire gave him a false map and kept the real one <laughs> sits on rock yes <laughs> that's a good <laughs> what what is it you're all in a clove hitch ain't you all in a clove hitch you will help me won't you you just put your trust in ben gunn ben gunn's the man to do it then you'll send me back gunn beckons jim jim sits right of gunn would you think it likely now your squire would prove liberally minded in case of help him being in a clove hitch oh i'm sure he would ay but you see i didn't mean giving me a gate to keep and a suit of livery clothes and such that's not my mark jim as jim starts to reply what i mean is would he likely come down to the tune of say one thousand pounds out of money that's as good as a man's own already you can count on it all the hands were to share and a passage home and a passage home the squire's a gentleman a gentleman born and not a gentleman of fortune hey jim of course Besides, if we get rid of the others, we should want you to help work the vessel home. Aye, so you would. And now, will you tell me how to get back to my friends? Will you? So much I'll tell you, and no more. Yes? I were in Flint's ship when he buried the treasure. You? He and six along, six strong seamen. They was ashore nigh on a week and thus waiting in the bay at the old walrus one day up went the signal and here come flint his head done up in a blue scarf in a little boat and all by himself by himself but the others the sun was up and mortal white he looked about the cut water but there he was you mind and the six all dead dead and buried how he done it not a man aboard as could make out it was battle murder and sudden death him against six he killed them all ay billy bones was mate long john he were quartermaster and they asked him where the treasure was ah says he you can go ashore if you like and stay but as for the ship she'll beat up for more by thunder that's what he said but then how how did you come here i was in another ship three years back and we sighted this island boys said i here's flint's treasure let's land and find it the captain was displeased at that but my messmates were all of one mind twelve days they looked for it and every day they had a worse word from me until one fine morning all hands went aboard as for you benjamin gunn says he here's a musket they says and a spade and a pickaxe you stay here and find flint's money for yourself they says marooned you well jim three years i've been here and not a bite of christian diet from that day to this but now look here 
Look at me. Well? Do I look like a man before the mast? Do I? No. No, says you. No, I won't, neither, says I. But then... Just you mention them words to your squire. No, he won't, neither. That's the word. But I don't understand. With more and more significance. Three years I was a man of this island. Light and dark, fair and rain, and sometimes I would maybe think upon a prayer says you and sometimes i would maybe think of my old mother so be as she's alive you'll say but the most part of gun's time this is what you'll say the most part of his time was took up with another matter and then you'll give him a nip like i do pinches jim in the ribs what do you mean and you're up and you'll say this gun's a good man you'll say and he puts a precious sight more confidence a precious sight mind you for a gentleman born than in these gentlemen of fortune having been one himself I don't understand a word you're saying, but how on earth am I to tell these things to the squire if I can't get aboard? Ah, there's the hitch for sure. Can't you help me some way, can't you? Ay, lad, you put your trust in Ben Gunn. Then will you? Will you help me? Ay. Crosses to boat, right center up, points to his boat. There's my boat. I made it with my own two hands. You'll let me take it? Ay, lad, you may take it. And you'll come too. You'll help me reach the boat? Nay, lad, not Ben Gunn. But you can have the coracle. Then I'll go alone. Here, help me launch it. As he starts to push out the boat, there is heard a salvo of shots. What? What was that? Crosses to rock, center. Shots? Then they've begun the fight already. What shall I do now? Wait. Crawls up the side of rock and peers anxiously in the distance. That wasn't from the boat. Where, then? Up on rock. Wait. Suddenly he utters a cry. What is it? Excitedly looks off right. Oh, look. Look. There. What you see? The Union Jack. Ay, lad. The Union Jack flying over the old stockade as was made years and years ago by print there are your friends jim more like the mutineers now silver would fly the jolly roger you don't make no doubt of that no that's your friends there's been blows and i reckon your friend has had the best of it then come come quick down from rock to center. Ben follows, holding Jim back. Nay, mate. Ben gun is fly. Rum wouldn't bring me there where you're going. Not rum wouldn't, till I see a born gentleman, and gets it on his word of honor. Then let me go. Still holding Jim. You won't forget my words. No, no. A precious sight. That's what she'll say, a precious sight more confidence, and then nips him, eh? Jim, always trying to get away. Yes, yes. And when Ben Gunn's wanted, you know where to find him, Jim. No, where? Just where you found him today, and him that comes is to have a white thing in his hand, and he's to come alone, you understand eh yes i think so you have something to propose and you wish to see the squire or the doctor here is that it and when says you why from noon observation to about six bells good now may i go you won't forget no no precious sight and reasons of his own says you 
reasons of his own. That's the mainstay. Yes, yes, now please, please. And Jim, if you was to see Silver, you wouldn't go to Selbin Gun. While the horses wouldn't draw it from you. No, no, I swear it. Well, then, I reckon you can go. Let's him go, and Jim darts away. Gun calls after him. Remember, precious sight and reasons of his own. <laughs> Turns to his own cave. Uh, if them pirates camp ashore, there'll be widows in the morning. <laughs> Curtain. Act Three, Scene Two, The Stockade. Upon three sides, wherever visible, high walls of rude planks, spike-shaped at top. At center and back, the front of a log house, with porch and door. Back of house, tall, large trees. At left, too, a wooden gate with wooden bar to fasten it. At several places about the walls, peak holes and gun rests. At center of stage, a sawed-off log which serves as a table, with other smaller logs which are used as seats. The floor is covered with sand. When curtain goes up, Gray, Hunter, Red Ruth, Joyce are stationed at different sides, each with gun to his shoulder, and each peering through a peak hole. On the table in the center stands Captain Smollett, an old-fashioned spyglass to his eye. Beside him stand Dr. Livesey and the squire. Before the curtain rises, there is heard the report of a cannon, fired at intervals. When the curtain rises, reports continue. Blaze away, blaze away. That's right. You've little enough powder left. Squire draws Dr. Livesey aside. We're beaten, doctor. They have us here like rats in a trap. And Hawkins, the lad was like one of my own. They've got us. We've got to give in, Captain Smollett. We've come to an end. Captain drops glass, surprised. What's that? I am responsible for these men here. I can't see them murdered. I'm willing to do anything. Well, I'm not. And I don't think these men are either. What's that? My lads, you heard what the squire said. Now then, what do you say? Shall we give up, or stand here and fight like Englishmen? Fight, fight to the end, sir. sir. You see, I knew I could count on them. And now I tell you, we are not beaten yet. There's still a chance. For the last half hour I've looked at that ship, and only two have I seen aboard her. Well. As soon as it grows dark, one or two of us will creep down to the beach, row out, and cut that ship adrift. Yes, but how about the rest of that crew of pirates? Not a sound have we heard from them the last hour. That's what I mean to find out. I must know at once where the enemy is and what he is planning. In short, I need volunteers to reconnoiter. Gray and Hunter step up at once. We'll go, sir. Wait. Before you offer, I want you to know the risk. It's life or death. We're ready, sir. Keep to the left, and under cover as much as possible. Try for the woods. Right, sir. Captain to Joyce at Peak Hole. All clear, Joyce? Yes, sir. Off with you, then. Squire, standing in front of gate. If you men succeed, we'll owe you our lives. I'll remember it. Hunter and Gray exit. Careful now. I tell you, if we can do this, we'll turn a trick on them. Another cannon shot booms out. Captain, it seems to me it's our flag they're aiming at. Wouldn't it be wiser to take it in? Strike my colors? No, sir, not I. We shall have to do it sooner or later. We're outnumbered three to one, beaten in every way. I'm willing to give them that chart if they'll return young Hawkins to us and let us go. And I, Captain Smollett, I'd see the whole treasure in Davy Jones' locker rather than any harm should come to Jim. Several pistol shots ring out. There is a cry and a call. Hunter and Gray, sir. What? Squire, who has rushed up excitedly. Hunter's wounded. The gates. Quick! They open the gates. Exclamations ad lib. Hunter, supported by Gray, enters. Hunter is badly wounded. The doctor immediately rushes to him. Smollett speaks to Gray. Well? Well? They're all in the woods there, on every side. I got one of them, I think. 
in your places to dr livesey who is bending over hunter is he badly hurt dr livesey yes very hunter as he takes the water be i going doctor tom my man you're going home i wish i had had a look at him first squire bends over tom 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 yes sir say you forgive me tom for bringing you along would would that would that be respectful sir ay do tom all right howsoever it be so be it amen falls back here gray give me a hand we'll carry him in gray and dr livesey carry in hunter then it's my fault all my fault for bringing him no time for that now sir those men out there are planning an attack that's it waiting to creep up in the dusk all the better for us if we win yes if not gray and dr livesey return to dr livesey well he's gone sir poor lad poor lad ay and how about the lad out there with them we'll know that very soon or i miss my guess ahoy those blackguards out there will not catch us unprepared we're ready for them when they come ahoy what's that listen log house ahoy log house ahoy they all rush to the peak holes and peer out silver as i live with a flag of truth what do you suppose some trick they know we've discovered their presence then turns to men all stand ready and watch the men take their places about the stockade and peer out through the peak holes gray stand by those gates gray takes his place at the gates wait till i give the word ahoy log house ahoy who goes stand or we fire flag of truce what do you want with your flag of truce captain silver come aboard to make terms what easy it's a trick i tell you you come alone alone dr low to smollett as gray opens the gates find out about hawkins if you can agree to anything make any terms so you can get the boy smollett turns as silver enters silver as gates close behind him flag of truce you respect a flag of truce if there's any treachery silver it will be on your side and the lord help you that's enough captain a word from you's enough looks about ah squire the top of the morning to you doctor here's my service if you have anything to say better say it right you are captain smollett well then we're willing to submit if we can come to terms and no bones about it what you wait what terms that was a good lay of yours sending us on that wild goose chase with that false chart it was a clever trick to get us out of the way while you reached here only well won't work twice i suspected you even then that's why i took hawkins but now here you are and there's your ship with the jolly roger flying at her masthead you lost most of your provisions coming here and i know just about how much ammunition you got that's our affair and ours with sudden fierceness we got you i tell you and you've got to do what i say we want that treasure and we want it now that's our point point enough you want your lives and that's your point now you give us that chart and then either you come aboard along with us once the treasure's shipped and then i'll give you my affy davy upon my word of honour to clap you somewhere safe ashore sarcastically of course we can trust you to do that well then if that ain't to your fancy some of my hands being rough you can stay here and we'll divide stores with you and i give you my affy davy as before to speak the first ship we sight and send him here to pick you up now you'll own that's talking turns round to the men i hope all hands will overhaul my words for what is spoke to one is spoke to all and is that all every last word by thunder refuse and you've seen the last of me but musket balls then hear me if you'll come one by one i'll engage to clap you all in irons oh and take you home for trial you will will you you can't find that treasure without us you can't work that ship without us look out i warn you you need us more than we need you oh we do do we you wouldn't stand there and defy me if we still had that boy if hawkins hadn't got away i'd have you on your knees fast enough hawkins safe thank god now bundle out of this double quick i'll put a bullet in your back when next we meet that's your last word it is all right my men are waiting for me to give the word you'll hear from me in the next five minutes i'll stave your old blockhouse in like a rum puncheon 
smollett laughs derisively laugh by thunder laugh before a quarter of an hour's out you'll laugh on that other side turns and looks at the men and then the die'll be the lucky ones stalks out gray closes the door behind him now lads i've given silver a broadside pitched it in red hot on purpose and before many minutes are out as he said we'll be boarded we're outnumbered but we fight in shelter and i believe we can drub em that's why i put it on so thick to make em fight we can stand anything but what he threatened a siege or being marooned so let them come lads let them come they all turn to get ready most of them taking off their coats doctor you take the rear there as he goes to his position in the back ay ay sir joyce the south side joyce takes his position mr trelawney you and gray will take the north joyce fires what what was that thought i saw something captain comes up and looks over joyce's shoulder hit him don't know sir wait easy now peers out intently there in the trees to the right don't you see something moving yes wait he's coming nearer get ready now wait till he gets to the open now then ready and suddenly stumbles back oh my god it's jim doctor comes rushing up what don't call out see to the left they're watching now ready joyce shoot to the left when i call ready ready on the gate doctor the doctor goes to the gate and unbars it now then calls jim come come now come lad to joyce shoot shoot man joyce shoots there is a rattle of musketry from the outside and then a slight pause my god did they get him did they jim comes rushing in the doctor grabs him in his arms thank god you're safe lad they almost got me sir where have you been how did you escape i'll explain all that later sir there's something else you ought to know i've met a man who's been here on this island three years ben gunn he says his name is he seems to have something to propose a man on the island i see something moving sir get back to your places doctor and squire go to their places jim you go into the house get under cover no sir i'll stay here and help you sir i think i see them over here too sir ay and here too and here sir that is from all sides they're getting ready for a charge now hold steady they're starting save your ammunition until they reach open have they come then let them have it there are cries and shouts together with shots from the outside those within the stockade return the fire while jim and smollett are busy loading and relaying muskets i got one of them and i sir four of them on this side they're making for the wall shoot keep em away don't let em over at em lads the sounds have increased cries curses and musket shots are heard look out there you redruth over your head above another pirate's head there appears a pirate with a red kerchief over his head and a knife in his mouth over man's head man shoots and the pirate falls that's it three pirates led by anderson break over the wall the fight now is a running one both within and without the stockade you squire gray back in the house lads we'll fight them there one pirate rushes at red ruth and stuns in fight another rushes at the doctor and forces him to flee the fight is going very much with the pirates it is now a running fight about the house with cutlasses and pistols for a time it is heard rather than seen for it is behind the house and within it then suddenly from one side of the house there comes running anderson cutlass in hand anderson rushing forward oh man don't leave one of em not a one suddenly jim comes rushing from the side opposite anderson and runs full tilt into him and is caught so it's you you young rascal well here's where we settles with you oh let me go let me go let you go ay here is where you go a long long ways lad he raises his cutlass jim shrieks then suddenly there is a pistol shot and anderson falls gray comes running around the corner i was just in time lad 
from the back of the house and inside there come running the pirates pursued by the doctor squire and smollett the pirates make for the wall after them don't let them get away don't let them escape suddenly one of the pirates upon the top of the stockade turns and fires deliberately at smollett and smollett stumbles back and finally falls captain you're wounded now listen quick before they can reach the beach beat em to the hispaniola and cut her adrift the tide will carry her to the north inlet once there and you've got em i tell you you've got em go go quick save the ship i'll go no no jim the captain said to save the ship and i'm going to do it curtain act three scene three the hispaniola tossing at sea the ship is in motion but evidently not under control she is under her mainsail and two jibs the sails droop at times and then fill with the report of a gun the tiller spins round from side to side the boat tosses and pitches as the sea runs high two men black dog and hands are seen upon the deck of the ship locked together in deadly wrestle each with a hand upon the other's throat finally they separate for a moment and then knives flash black dog by a quick movement wounds hands in the leg as he starts to follow up his advantage hands turns quickly catches black dog by the neck and holds him back against the rigging his knife at his throat both are drunk hands as he gets his wound oh you you would you would would you now then the boat lurches at the same instant hands makes a lunge and catches black dog now then speak you set the shepherd trip you did say it say it struggling no no you'll never tell that to silver now for the last time say it say it up no then there stabs him you'll never tell silver shakes him again and again as he speaks oh throws him from him tries to stumble over the deck but is forced to catch the rigging of the mainsail what's this by thunder he's got me he got me i can't see what is it growing more and more terrified i've gone blind i've gone blind sinks back in the rigging trying to hold himself up apparently in a faint for a moment there is silence while the boat tosses from side to side jim appears climbing over the side of the boat for a moment he looks about timidly and afraid then he calls ahoy shipmates ahoy he waits for an answer when he gets none he scrambles down on deck and with pistols drawn goes carefully over the boat finally he sees o'brien dead and hands apparently dead he starts back oh dead as he starts away there is a groan jim turns quickly he is very frightened with a cry he rushes out and on the companionway he comes back almost at once gone all gone i've got the ship i've got the ship he turns to go to the tiller if i can only sail her as he hears a groan who's that he waits for an answer when he gets none he stands fearfully waiting again a groan answer answer or i fire oh it is ro hands lad so it's you mr hands much hurt i'm dying dying i can't move see that you don't for the first move i shoot and where might you have come from i have come to take possession of this ship as hands laughs so mr hands you'll regard me as captain until further notice wickedly captain a jim presenting his pistols is it understood mr hands Aye, it's understood then first we'll strike those colors pulls down the jolly roger there god save the king and there's an end to captain silver too throws flag overboard will you tell me how you might have come aboard all night have been below in a little boat it was i who cut the ship adrift you and i killed him there for it i'm gonna you've been drifting all night i'm going to beach this ship at the north inlet where we can get off the provisions and where silver will never find her all alone eh yes alone ever sail a boat mate i'm going to sail this one 
with your help, Mr. Hands. Oh, ho! With my help, is it? Just so, Mr. Hands. Now, I'll make a bargain with you, Hawkins. Captain Hawkins. Captain Hawkins. This leg's bleeding. I'll die. I will, if you don't give me a hand. Give me a kerchief to tie my wound up and some food and drink, and I'll tell you how to sail her, and that's about square. You know where the North Inlet is? To be sure. You'll take her there? I. Mind, at the first sign of any treachery from you. I'm no such fool. Go below and get me some brandy. No. But you said... First the boat. Smart lad. Take no chances. Well, have it your way. Take a haul on the mainsail there. Jim goes to the mainsail and pulls at the ropes to make her fast. Hold it tight. There. As Jim works, Hans seems always to be growing stronger and wilier. She'll sail under the mainsail alone. Now put your helm hard a lee. Hans becomes more and more active while Jim's eyes are upon steering. He surreptitiously tries and is able to move back and forth. It's a narrow channel. You have to feel your way. She's safe so far. You're doing fine, lad. Couldn't do better myself. And now, come here. Comes up. What do you want? A little drop of brandy. I've earned it now. All right, I'll get it. You sure the boat will be all right? Sure, old steady. All right. Jim enters cabin. Hands crawls to knife, hides it in his bosom, and returns to former position as Jim returns. I couldn't find any. Not a drop left. Jim, I'm for my long home, lad, this time, and no mistake. Come here. As Jim comes a step nearer, Hans places his hand in his jacket where he has concealed the knife. Jim, startled, draws his pistols. None of that. Take your hand out. Take it out. Or I'll... Hans, draw out his hand with stick of tobacco. Just get in my tobacco. See? Will you cut me a junk of that? I haven't the knife. Throw it here. Hans throws him the tobacco, and he starts to cut it. If I were in your place, I'd be thinking of prayers and not tobacco. Why? Tell me that. Why? You've broken your trust. You've lived in sin and lies and blood, and you ask me why? For God's mercy, that's why, Mr. Hans. Jim gives him back the tobacco and goes to the tiller. I can see the beach from here. Hold oh, that mainsail a notch. All right, lad. All right, sir. Hands now, knife in hand, has worked up back of Jim. Jim, holding the tiller, has not noticed him. But the moment that Hands throws himself forward with a cry, Jim suddenly sees him and throws himself aside to avoid the blow. As he does so, he lets go the tiller, which springs back and hits Hands across the chest, stopping him. Before he could recover, I was safe out of the corner where he had trapped me, with all the deck to dodge about. Just forward of the mainmast I stopped, drew from my pocket my pistol, though he was once more coming directly toward me. Stop, stop, or I fire. You little rat! I've got a score to settle with you! Starts forward. Stop! As Hans still comes forward. Stop! As Hans still comes forward. Stop! Well, then, take it. He pulls the trigger. The gun doesn't explode. Hands, with a cry of exultation. Aha! So the guns don't go off. Never thought to prime them, my fine captain. Now then, my brave lad, you're going to save the boat, are you? We'll see. We'll see. Meanwhile, Hans has been approaching, and Jim has been fleeing. Wounded as he was, it was wonderful how fast he was, I had no time to try my other pistol. One thing I saw, I must simply retreat before me, or he would speedily hold me boxed in the stern. I placed my hands on the mainmast and waited, every nerve stretched. Seeing I meant to dodge, he also paused, and a moment or two passed in feints on his part and correspondent movements on mine. It was such a game as I had often played at home about the rocks and I thought I could hold my own at it against an elderly seaman with a wounded thigh. Well, while I stood thus, suddenly the Hispaniola struck, staggered, ground for an instant on the sand, and then swift as a blow canted over on the port side till the deck stood at an angle of about forty-five degrees. 
we were both capsized in a second and both of us rolled about together into the scuppers but i was first to foot again the sudden canting of the ship made the deck no place for running and i had to find some new way of escape quick as thought i sprung into the mizzen shrouds rattled up hand over hand and did not draw breath until i was safe on the cross trees as they play a sort of grim hide-and-seek he makes a movement and misses jim by thunder if this leg were right it would be quick work for you but i'll get you you'll not get out of this corner i've got you now i've got you as hands almost corners jim the boat strikes and they are tumbled together jim scurries to the mainmast not yet mr hands not yet scurries up the mainmast if that boat hadn't struck i'd have had you and i've got you now you can't get down i've got you up a tree mine fine captain jim draws other pistol i still have another pistol mr hands it is not like the other this one is primed another step and i'll blow your brains out stops eh drop that knife mr hands drop that knife drop it i say drop it very well lad suddenly hurls the dagger there take it with a cry as the knife strikes him in the shoulder turns away oh then as hands with shout makes toward him he pulls the triggers on the pistols and hands with a cry pitches forward as jim lets fall the pistols with an effort jim crying out under the pain finally wrenches his shoulder free and then tottering and almost faint he cries the stockade now for the stockade curtain end of act three